Okay, I'm going to attempt to teach you how to make a computer console out of mesh for upload to Second Life. This is the mesh program I use, it's called Blender 3D. You can find it on the internet with an easy quick search and it's completely free to use, to download and to use. And that's why I like it. <laughs> Now, this is the default screen that you're presented with when you first open Blender. It's just a simple cube on a grid. If you hold down the middle mouse button and keep it held, the scroll reel, hold that down. And then you can drag your mouse around to orbit your build, your cube. At the moment we're in, if we look here, we're in object mode. That is so, allows you to just move the object around on the grid. But we don't want to move the object at the moment. We want to edit the object shape and size and all that. So with the mouse in the middle of the grid and the object selected, we need to switch to edit mode change from object mode to edit mode and to do that we press the tab key as you can see we've now changed from object to edit and all faces are selected we don't want all faces selected so we right click on the face we want which is the one at the front just right click on it that will deselect everything but that face now we orbit around so we can see it a bit better by holding down the scroll wheel and dragging the mouse around. That's a nice angle to see it at. Now if we look up here, you can see on the x-axis this space is plus one meter from the center of the grid. We want it at exactly the central point of the grid, so we use these arrows to take off 10 centimeters or add on 10 centimeters at a time. Let's take off 10 centimeters now. That brings it down to 90, and as you can see, the face has moved. If we click it four more times, one, two, three, four, the face has now moved to 50 centimeters from the central point of the grid. We want it at zero, so we just keep going until we get to zero. Now we switch to the back face by just right clicking on it. And we want it at about 25 centimeters from the center of the grid, but because we're on the negative side of the grid, you can see it's at the moment it's at minus one. We want it at minus 25 centimeters instead of minus one meter. So instead of hitting these buttons, which we could do to change it like we did a moment ago, instead we can just click on the number, left click on the number to highlight it and then we can replace it by typing point 25 of a meter one quarter of a meter and then hit enter and the face jumped past the center of the grid into the positive side of the grid which is too much the reason it did that is because I forgot to hit minus point 25 I just hit point 25. So to undo that, we hold down control and hit the Z key to undo what we just did. Now we type it in properly. Hit minus point two five. Enter. That's done it properly. Now this face is too high up, it's, uh, if we click on it, we can see the coordinates are two meters high, that's too high. 
so let's lower it down to 20 centimeters now we can either click on this and put 0.2 of a meter two tenths per meter like that or if I undo that by control Z we can do it with the arrow keys instead 10 centimeters at a time Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen clicks, and it has the same effect. So you've got a choice. You can either use the arrows to change a face's coordinates, or you can just type in the exact number if you can work it out or know it. Now let's select the front face now we want to pull out we don't want to move this face we want to create a new bunch of faces by pulling them out from this face extruding so we hit the E key and as you can see, a blue line has appeared to show which direction the extrusion will go. And say we want to go half a meter, so we hit 0.5, enter. And as you can see, we've got a new block, which is attached to the current block. Uh, let's click on this face and move it up by 10 centimeters just to give this block an angle and then we extrude this face again let's extrude it up to 80 centimeters which means we since we're already at 30 centimeters we've got to extrude it up by 0.5 so e five enter next it's the same again e.3 this time e.3 enter as you can see the top part of the face the top face is at 1.1 on the z axis next is this face extrude point five e point five enter now since we scroll the mouse wheel back and forth to zoom in and out let's zoom in now this face is too high up and it's not angled either but we, we want to angle it so what we do is we press the A key to deselect everything then down here where it's in face select mode we change that to edge select mode that way we can now select an edge and this is the edge we want to select and we want to go down by 10 centimeters so we just click pattern and now we do this edge and go up by 10 centimeters like that now if we zoom out and angle just right you can see we've got the right angle on our keyboard we've got the base down here and the keyboard here for our computer console next we go back into face select mode from edge select back into face select by clicking it and then select the highest face and let's extrude it upwards by one meter so hit extrude one enter extrude one enter e1 enter it's that simple now we scroll out a bit and do the same again but this time instead of one meter let's go e.2 
0.5 enter then go back into edge select mode and click on the appropriate edge and we want it to go forward by 50 centimeters so we go to x one two three four five then go back into face select select that face extrude point two enter then press the a key to deselect everything that's basically a console now but it would be nice to put some um, sides onto the console so let's select all of these faces now to select more than one face you've got to hold down shift and then click the other faces that's how you select all the faces now we want to extrude those faces out so we hit E <laughs> Point five enter and we do the same on the other side select the first face then hold down shift and select all the other ones you want and go E.5 enter and then press the A key to deselect everything now we can add in some side panels to make the console look a bit more sci-fi and in order to do that what we need is to delete some of the faces so delete the faces that I'm about to click click that then hold down shift then that that then orbit a bit and hold shift orbit a bit then hold shift and click that that then do a shift orbit hold down shift and click that as you can see you can now see which faces are like do the same on the other side by holding down shift like so now you've selected those faces we can delete them in order to delete specific spe selected faces you press the x key and the delete menu comes up and you scroll you go down on the menu to faces and left click it and as you can see the faces have disappeared we now need to add in some new faces but we can only do this by going from face select mode but not like last time when we went into edge select we're going to go into the vertex select which will select the corners now we zoom into appropriate so we can see it easy and then select the corners we want one hold down shift two three four now we've selected four vertices and to fill those four vertices with a face we just press the f key and then we hit the a key to deselect and we've got a new face in there and we do the same to fill in the other faces and if you watch you'll see how I do it one hold down shift two three four F and then A to deselect then select the first vertices then hold down shift so you can select the second a third and a fourth and then press the F key to fill them in and then the A key to deselect and we do this the same on the other parts of the model as well hold down shift fill F for fill click the first one hold down shift click second third fourth hit the F key to fill the space and the A key to deselect and the same again on the front panel F and do exactly the same on the other side 
fail. One, two, three, four, fail. Okay. One, two, three, four, fail. A. One, two, three, four, fail. A. And again. side panels now to a sci-fi style computer. Now let's think, how can we make this more interesting looking? Well, we could go into edge select mode down to the bottom here. Select this edge and this edge. That's just the two edges there and there. Maybe, in fact, let's select, in fact, don't do that. Press the A key to undo that, to deselect all that. Then hold down Alt and Shift at the same time, and then click on one of these lines. Let me show you, that wasn't very clear. Let me unselect that and show you again. Now, let's go around the back instead this time. If we hover over one of these faces with the mouse, getting ready to select it, but before we select it, we hold down Alt and then hold down Shift as well at the same time. And then click on it. It will select all the edges in that edge loop. Oh, it should, but it doesn't. It misses out a few where there's indents. So we hold down shift to add those few it missed out. Now we can move it on the Y axis, say up here, minus one to minus 1.1. It's 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters. And we do the same on this side. Alt, Shift, Select. Turn back around. Select the ones that were missed from the edge shape or by holding down Shift, Select, 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 Release Shift. Then we add one, two. And it makes it look a little bit more sci-fi-ish. Now, we need to add a space for the keyboard. So we go into face select mode, click on the keyboard itself, press the I key for insert. And then move the mouse towards the center of the face to change the size of the insert. As you can see, it changes its side. That wasn't clear. Let's undo that and do it again. We select the face, press insert, and as you can see, there are red dot lines pointing towards the middle of the face. Now we just move the mouse to the middle to create an insert, like so. Now, if we want to make a specific size insert, then we look into this area here, insert faces, thickness, and we just type in a specific thickness, let's say 0 0.08. Now, if we then select this face and press the I key, it will remember 0 0.08, or it should have. I must have pressed it twice by mistake. So let's control Z to undo that, and then press insert. For some reason, it's not remembering my insert, so we have to type it in again, 0 0.08. I should do it. Now the A key to deselect. I know I'm not.
not very clear, but I'm very tired while I'm making this tutorial. Now, what is required is to make a texture for the computer. To add a texture to the computer, so you won't need that anymore. So we close that in and we pull this open a bit more and select this little one here for materials. Now we add a material and then we click on new to give the material a name and its default name will be material. We can change that by highlighting it with a click and change it to base material. Enter. And then to add that material to the model, we just click add. The reason I call it base material is because it's the very first material that you put onto the model, which means it'll automatically be assigned to every face this model has. Now, we create a second material, add, by pressing the add key, then we assign it a name, the same way we did before, we call it keyboard. Once we've given, once we've created the material, given it a name, now we add it to the model. However, the model doesn't know where to add this material since it's already got a material on every face. So we have to tell it which face is to add this material to. And we want it on the keyboard face. So we click that face and it tells us which material is, it shows us which material is assigned to that face. Now, if we want to change to a different material, we go to keyboard and then assign. Now that face is now no longer part of the base material. It's now assigned to the keyboard material. And we press the A key to deselect. And it might be wise to open up Diffuse and give it a different colour to the rest of the model. I just hit this by mistake. Let's give it a different colour to the rest of the model. Let's get rid of all the blue and the green. So we've got a red keyboard. And we increase the intensity of the red, just for the hell of it. Now we click screen, create a new material, give it a name, screen, and add it to the model and assign it to the selected face. And then change the colour by increasing the intensity and this time we'll make it blue and get rid of that. Now let's add a third material, no, a fourth material, sorry, let's just lower that down, add another material, make it a new one, give it a name, let's call it Porters, and add it. Now we select the faces we want for this material. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the borders of the keyboard and the screen. Now we click on borders and assign those faces to it. And then change its color. Let's go green with this. These colors aren't important, they're just to 
can help you remember which faces I've selected and assigned to which materials. Now we add another material. Give it a name. Bend. Add. Select. And choose the vent assign. And give it a colour. Let's say. Oh, we've got red, blue, and green, so let's give it a yellow. Select. You'll see why I'm select why I'm calling it keyboard screen borders vent in a minute when I start to add textures. Now let's change the colour of the base material. I usually like to make the base material black. It's already assigned, so we don't need to assign it ourselves. And there's our console. We could add lit another material and call it sides add and then select these spaces. Assign sides to those faces, and then change the colour. Let's make it a nice dark grey, but not black. Cut that one then. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different materials on this model. The reason we've added six materials is to do with Second Life. Think of each material, once uploaded to Second Life, each material will act like one face for the object. This object now has six Second Life faces. It actually has a lot more faces than six, but Second Life will recognize only six faces because of the six materials. Like as you can see this green is made up of eight faces but Second Life will only see all eight faces as if they're one face. <laughs> and will allow a texture to be added in a fashion as if it's one face we'll see when we get into Second Life. Second Life allows up to eight faces per object and you must remember that so when you're applying your materials in Blender you can only use up to eight of them. Now to add the textures themselves let's select Screen and then go into textures and then we go up here we open this drag out another window we don't need that part and we go down here and select UV and then we browse for a suitable image to use for the screen. So we go here, open image, and we look on our computer to browse to a suitable image. Somewhere where you know you've stored a suitable image. If you aren't sure what images to use, if you can't decide from their titles, you click this button up here and that will show you what the images are. There's a nice engineering image we can use. So we double click it and that opens it up. Now what we must do is 
close that down a bit. Select the face. Select the image. And unwrap the face. Onto the image. That's all you do. Now, to make the face fit the image a bit better, we scroll along on this bar, choose Edge Select, select that edge, then we press the G key to grab the edge once it's selected, and then the Y key to move it up on the Y axis. click to have it in position. When you, if you select one of these and you need to adjust it, then that's the x-axis. You must always press the G to grab and then whatever axis you want, Y or X. Then press A to deselect. And now we go here. We want to create one of these textures, we want to use one of these textures. So we we'll create a new one, give it a name. Screen. Same name as this material. Nice and easy, press enter. And then press the A, add key. To add it, go into clouds, image or movie. That's important. Mapping. Where it says generated, change that to UV. And then here, those are the images that you've opened already. And since we've only opened one, there it is. Select it. And click that to get rid of that. Don't know why that's there, but it always is in Blender. And then pack the image by clicking this. That packs the image into the build so that when you go to upload it to Second Life, you won't lose the texture. You'll be able to find it easily. Let me shorten that down. Now, if we go down here and click, this is the method of how you view your model. And if we click it and change it from a solid view to a textured view, you can see the texture is there on the model. Next we select, we go in, back into materials, select keyboard, click on keyboard, open a keyboard image. Let's find a keyboard image somewhere. Use this one, nice and simple. There it is, it's appeared. Now we just unwrap that face. As you can see, the keyboard isn't aligned very well. So, what we do is we move the mouse over into this window, press the A key to select all. Then press the G key to grab and the Y key to move it upwards on the Y axis to a more central location. Then left click to stop the movement. And then press S to scale. And you just got to use a judgment. Maybe S quite to scale only on the Y axis. The keyboard seems to be in there nicely now. So I need to deselect again. Go into texture mode. Add a new texture keyboard. Image or movie, generate to UV. So 
find the keyboard image. There it is. Get rid of that. Pack the image in. When you pack the image, it will save it with the model. So the model won't lose the image when you go to upload it to Second Life. And if it does, then it's easily findable. Because it will be saved at the same location the model is saved once you've finished building. Now we've done that. Let's go into render mode. Let's um, close this actually. To close this, you don't need the texture one. Hang on, I'm getting a bit confused. Um, we need one more texture. So. We still need this, so let's go to materials mode, then select the vent material, vent face, open the image. Let's see if we can find a nice texture to use as a vent. This one, I always like this one and unwrap. No, this is a little more awkward to do, so select that, grab with the G key, move it, limit the grab to the Y axis with the Y key, then move it up. Grab Y and scale X. That makes the vent fit nicely onto there. Then we go into there, new material, then add image on movie, UV, vent, get rid of that, pack. Now that's all the texturing we need to do. So we can close this texture editor window now by going here and then right click, join area, drag the arrow over here, like so. We can smaller that down a bit. And then A key to deselect. Now we can go into render view to see what it would look like, what the finished product will look like. And to do that, you hold down the shift key and press Z. And this will render the image. And as you can see, it's looking okay, but I don't like that green. I forgot to change its colour, so... Press Shift Z again to come out of render mode. Open this up, back to material, borders, change its colour to a nice dark grey. It's not too dark. looking more like a computer but I think this space here should also match the side color and that's easy enough to do we come out with the mode with the shift Z select that face select sides assign that changes the assignment of the face there it comes. Nicely done. That's the model complete. I don't want to make it too complex for people following the tutorial. It's just a simple, easy, quick tutorial. Shift or Z to get out of that. Now what we do is we give the model a name by clicking on 
the plus to open this up, go down to item. It's still called Q because that's what it was when we first started. Let's change it now to console. Now the model has a name and we can save it. We go up into file, save, choose a location to save it and just change the name from untitled to console. But it must be console, it must, whatever you change its name to, it must have dot blend at the end. Console dot blend. Save. Now that is saved in the My Pictures folder, which I'll open up now just to show you. There it is. Saved there. Now I can reload that into Blender at any time I want for future editing to refine its detail, but it's always wise to save your model so you can alter it later if you need to. Let's go back into Blender. And now let's export the model for Second Life. We go to File, Export, Collada, that's the format that Second Life uses. And as you can see, it's remembered the name Console DEA. Dot DEA is what's needed for a Collada file. Now we scroll down here, and this is important. We go to Operator Presets, open it up, and go down to Second Life plus OpenSim Static. And click on that. That will automatically set all these things to what they need to be for Second Life. It's already part of the Blender. You don't need to add it as your own operator presets because it's already included. Then you just press export. And I saved it in my pictures folder next to where I saved the model. So let's have a look. There's the model again, as you saw it before. But now we've got the Collada file plus the textures that were packed with the model. So that's the main part of the build done. Let's go back to Blender now. Let's press the tab key to come out of edit mode into object mode. Now what we do is we want to create a physics shape for this model. It doesn't need one because it's a very simple model. But if you're going to be creating more complex models, then it's nice to have a physics shape because that will lower your land impact when you upload it to Second Life. So what we do is we press A to unselect the model, press Shift and C to move the resin cursor ring thing to the middle of the grid, and then Shift A to add a new mesh, let's add a cube. With the cube selected but not the model, press tab into edit mode. You can't edit the model now. You can only edit the cube because it's a separate model. Let's click the bottom face and move it up to the bottom of the model. But not enough so you can see the bottom face, it's as close as you can get without entering the model. Same on all sizes, you just drag. You can use coordinates on the arrow keys up here, but if you don't have to, you can just drag if you want to make it nice and quick and easy. basically cover the model. The simpler the physics shape, the better. Now that we've got the physics shape, we can press the tab key to come out. Now, this is important. 
Origin to Geometry. That moves the cursor to the centre of the box. So the box's point of origin will be its centre rather than its bottom. Now we press the Z key and you can see your original model inside so you just click on one of the lines of it and since you don't need it anymore because you've already saved it you press X delete then press the Z to come out of wireframe and now all you do is you save your physics shape let's give it a name first before we save it uh, must be clicked on in order to give it a name and we'll change it to console physics so you know what it is then you go to file save make sure the name is changed here as well and save it and there it is the physics shape saved next to the model sh shape go back into blender now export the model as a collider file operate presets a second life to work and sim export well that's the blender part done now I'm going to pause the video here while I wait to start up Second Life. So the next time this video starts up again we should be in Second Life ready to upload our model. Okay we're back and we're in the Second Life default viewer in a sandbox and we're ready to upload our model so let's click build go to upload model and then we can browse for where our model is console and it appears here on the screen you can use your mouse button to you scroll to zoom in and your left mouse button to rotate and you can't see the textures on the model unless you highlight them the screen texture doesn't look like it's packed very well but we'll see once we fully upload the model what happens so the model is called console which is right the model represents a building component the upload options include textures the physics options choose one from file and this is where we browse for our physics shape that we made the simple cube there console physics as you can see the cube appears around the model technically this model doesn't need a physics shape because it's so simple but I just made one anyway to show you how to do it once we've got the physics shape and the model loaded we then hit analyze to give second life a chance to figure out the dimensions of the model and its shape and everything once it's analyzed it turns a color so you can hit calculate weights and fees and then wait for it to come up with a calculation once the calculation is done the button changes to upload and it gives you the results it will cost 41 linden dollars to upload this the land impact will be 0 0.5 which means the land impact is less than that of a prim and it's always rounded up when it's less than so it will be equivalent to one prim so we hit upload and just wait for the upload to happen 
console failed to upload. The texture is empty. Upload invalid. Ah, I know what that means. That means that the texture for the screen that hasn't shown up won't upload with the model. So I close it and I go into upload options and uncheck texture to load the model without textures. I go back into physics and then calculate again. And this time it's $11 to upload it because it's not uploading textures as well. As you know, each texture costs $10 million to upload. And since this is no longer going to upload with the textures, it's only going to cost $11 million. So I just press upload. And the upload was very quick since it wasn't uploading images as well. Okay, I paid $11 million to upload that. And there it is, console, it's in my inventory. Now I drag it out to the ground. There it presses. Let's walk over to it. This is facing away from me. And there's our console, but the colors aren't great. And the textures, we didn't include them, so we have to upload the textures separately. That means three textures, vent, screen, and keyboard. So let's go into upload bulk. 10 per file, and it's three files, so it'll be 30 lindens. We want that one, that one, and that one. Open. And now it's uploading. Three image files and textures. And the first one's done. Now the second one. And the third one's done as well now. And there they are, the three textures. Now, in order to apply those textures to the model, since we, they didn't upload with it, you go into edit mode, select face, and as you can see, each material is a different face. Screen is one face, vent is another, keyboard is another, the edges around is another, the sides is another, and then there's the base material for the rest of them. They all act as different, each material acts as a different face, that's why you're only allowed eight materials for anything you want to upload to Second Life. Anyway, let's go to the vents material. And there it is, that's the vent material, it's called Capture for some reason, but that's the one we want to apply to it. Now we can either drag it to the face like that, and it will apply automatically. Oh no, that's the keyboard one. Texture. I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm getting my textures confused from badly naming them. There we go. You can either drag it to a face like that, or you can go in here and go to textures, select the face you want, and then just search for the texture. textures are on there, they look a bit dull. That's why I always make my faces full bright. Put this button here, full bright, gives them a little glow. 
This tends to get a bit too glowy, this texture, so I like to darken it down a bit by adding a colour. Not too much though. As you can see, the colours do look very different to what they did in Blender, but that's because Second Life uses a different colouring system to Blender, so let's select this face and get full bright. See what it's like on full bright? Not very good, so let's lighten it up a bit. Okay, that's a bit better. Now this face, full bright. Lighten it up a little, but not as much. Okay, make sure this one is full bright and full black. Now these two faces seem to be very similar in colour. Too similar, so let's darken this one a bit. That's better. But they still look pretty rubbishy. So let's add a shine. Let's click this. Texture shininess high. That's better. We'll do the same for all the non screen faces. Just do this one. Or... There, it got a nice shine. It looks better if you turn your graphics up. It adds almost kind of reflection to it. Anyway, that's the model prepared. I think these need to be darkened a bit more, or this needs to be brightened a bit. Yeah, that's looking better. Now what we do is we go into Features. This is an important step. Go out from Select Facing to Move so you can select the whole model. And while in Features, change it from Convex Hold to Prim. That is very important because with convex hull you can some it sometimes acts like a phantom and um, you can walk straight through your model and if your model is a floor way then you'll fall through the floor so best to have it as a nice solid prim and since it's a computer we can change that from wood to plastic or metal I think plastic for this one because it looks kind of plasticky and that's the model done we can close the build menu now and open up our inventory find where we uploaded this model it's this console there now this one is the original uploaded that we dragged to the ground this one is still convex hole and we don't want that so we get rid of it delete and instead we take this one into our inventory now we've got the prim into our inventory instead of the convex hole can we drag it to the ground just to admire our work now but it's done and if you walk into it, you're not walking through it. And if we go into develop menu, render metadata, physics shapes, you can see the box around the model. Now, if I was to make this box a bit more complex, like putting in the holes in the front for the screens and the foot area, that would make the land impact rise up because it would take more prims to create the, sh the physics shape. So that's why you keep the physics shape as simple as possible. Models tend to be very complex, so you put a simple physics shape around them to lower the land impact of them. Because without the physics shape, they would be high land impact. So 
let's go out and physics shape. Now let's upload the model again from the Blender files, but this time without a physics shape. Upload model console building component physics but this time we won't go from file like we did before we just set it to high and let second life decide what kind of shape to put on it second life does a better job it doesn't fill in these gaps these indents but its land impact will be higher calculate weights of these 13 upload and there's the other one we just rest it now we edit to move it next to this one side now we need to texture up the new one as well so basically we're just going to texture mode select face select this face and this one and copy the color the shininess to holy and the full bright and the same on this one okay full bright Forgot to put the shine on this one. Now that and that. Okay. Color. Okay, and pull point. Okay. That and that and okay. Pull point. That and that. Okay. Pull point. There. Two identical models. What's that? One. Now this one, we need to change it to from convex hole to prim and plastic. Now we've got two identical models. The one with the physics shape here, and one without, but one with my own custom physics shape, the cube, the box, and the other one with um, a second life generated physics shape. Let's check the land impact for an edit. It says land impact of the one with the physics shape is one. Land impact of one. Let's try this one. Land impact of three. So this is equivalent to three prims, whereas this is equivalent to one prim. But they both look identical. And you can't walk through either of them. That's why it's good to use a physics shape. If this was a much more complex model, say an entire engine room or something, it could probably be about 2,000 prims without a physics shape, but with a physics shape it would only be 200. <laughs> 
That's the idea of doing a physics shape. Anyway, I hope this tutorial helped. I know it's a bit rough and ready-made, but that's because I'm knackered while making it. But there you go. Your second life computers.